Hi everyone, it's Bernie over at The Woolly Bee. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be sharing with you my summer cardigan, uh, which I made using a 100% cotton yarn with a 5mm hook. I will be listing all of the materials needed in the description box below, so look out for that. Uh, however, for this video, I'm going to be using a 6mm hook and some 100% acrylic yarn. Um, because I'll only be making a small sample um, and then for this garment all these stitches you'll need to know would be your chain stitches, uh, single crochet and double crochet. So without any further ado let's get all of our tools together and let's get started. Okay, so because I'm just making a small sample piece, I've just chained up 40 uh, chains and we will get right into the pattern. Um, once you've reached your desired length, uh, which will be in multiples of four, you can get started. So, yarn over and in the fourth chain from the hook, that's one, two, three, four, do one double crochet and chain two. So. This first chain three counts as your first double crochet, second one is your second double crochet, and this is how we start our pattern. After the chain two, skip two stitches or two chains, and in the third one, do a double crochet, and in the next one, a double crochet, followed by a chain two, skip two, one double crochet in the third chain, and another double crochet, chain two, skip two, do two double crochet and you'll continue to do this little pattern to the end of the row. I will meet you once you have only four chains left so please hit pause. Okay so you should have left four chains, do your last chain two and in the last two chains place a double crochet in each. You're just going to chain one and turn your work and the next row is simply a row of single crochet. You'll place a single crochet in each and every stitch um, and chain two space. So two single crochets in the first two double crochet, two single crochet in each uh, chain two space. single crochet in each double crochet and two single crochets in each chain two space. Do this to the end of the row and I will meet you uh, when we reach the end here for that last single crochet to go into that last chain. So I've reached the end of my row. I've got two more single crochets to place, one in that double crochet in one in the and one in the initial chain three. That is our last single crochet, chain up one, turn your work, and we'll be repeating the very first row again. Two double crochet, chain two, skip two, two double crochet, chain two, skip two, two double crochet. And this is the extent of the pattern for this garment. I'm going to do, I think, uh, two more repeats and meet back up with you while you continue with your front uh, panel. And then we will meet up when we're ready to do the neckline. All right, so once, once you've reached the width of your front panel, your, your first front panel, um, we're going to uh, do the neckline. Be sure to end on a row of single crochet. You can then fold your panel in half and find the half measurement. Mine is uneven but that's not the end of the world. Just uh, when you are sure that that is where you want your neckline to start, place a marker there because you have to end on two double crochet that'll be the end for uh, the neckline we um so i'm gonna do this little row until here and then continue so chain up one do your first double crochet do another double crochet chain two skip two double crochet double crochet chain two skip two 
double crochet, double crochet, chain two, skip two, double crochet, and continue until you find your half measurement for where you want your neckline to start. And then do the last two double crochet, chain up one, and turn your work. So for my garment, I worked another uh, repeat of single crochet and I did this section for about six repeats of each row and that measurement came to about eight inches. So you can do the same and then we'll meet up once this neckline part of the uh, backside is finished and um, we will then continue. So see you soon. Hey guys, I'm back. So once you've done your five to six rows for your uh, neckline, uh, you will end this row on a on the double crochet and chain two row. And then what you want to do is count your front panel stitches on the other side. In my case, it comes to 20. So all you want to do from here is chain up the exact amount of stitches on this side. Just continue with a chain length that has the number of stitches on this side and add one extra for the turning chain at the end. So I'm going to do that with you. So we've ended with our two double crochet and uh, because I already know I need to chain 20, I'm just going to do that. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we want to chain up an extra one in order to turn back and work this row of single crochet. So chain one, skip that first one and into the next chain to a single crochet. Now just continue with single crochet right back the way we came. I will do this with you. So hang in there, it's a little bit tedious, but I'm sure you can make it work. I'm almost back to our neckline, and then we will continue with the other part of um, our garment, which is the continuation of the back panel and the other front panel. As you can tell, this garment is made in one continuous uh, I don't know, row, round, section, <laughs> but there is uh, never any ending of the garment. So I've reached the back part of the piece and we'll continue with our single crochet into the first two double crochet, two single crochet in the chain two space, two single crochet in the two double crochet, and you'll continue in this manner to the end of your row and I will meet you back there. All right, so your work should look something like this. Very weird, I know. <laughs> but at the end of that row, chain up one, turn the work, and then continue with your double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain two, to the end of the long chain that you will now have in front of you um, to finish off your other panel. So let us meet again once we reach the end of this row. Okay. At the end of your row, you should have four chains left. You will do your last chain two, one double crochet in that second last stitch and your last double crochet in that turning chain that we did. And that will be the end of that row. So I'm going to do two more repeats and then I'm going to show you how to fold and uh, finish up your garment. So I will see you soon. All right, I'm back. So you should have something looking like this. Um, I'm going to continue uh, adding just one row of single crochet throughout this little sample piece. You may choose to do the same or not. It's completely up to you. When I come back, we will fold our garment, work our armholes and finish up with a little bit of fringe. So I will see you in just a bit. Okay, so I'm back. I've worked a row of single crochet right around my project and this is how we're going to fold it. 
in order to shape our armholes. So when you fold it like this, it'll look like a really large poncho. And yes, you can leave it as a poncho. Um, but for because I'm finishing my garment, I'm just going to show you how to work up uh, to your armholes. So you'll take your measurements for what whatever um, width you need for your armhole. Place your marker. Mark the other side uh, with the exact same measurements. Place a marker there. And then you're just going to either sew together from the bottom to where your marker is. Or you can choose to crochet the two ends together just from here to here and the same on the other side. And once we've done that, um, if you choose to sew or crochet, do turn your garment inside out and mark it on that side so that all the, the sewing or uneven edges is on the inside of your garment. So I'm just going to do a very quick one and I'm going to use just a smaller crochet hook, just one size smaller. I'm going to just tie a slip knot and then I'm just going to, uh, I think, just single crochet or maybe slip stitch my two ends together. So joining here and also on the opposite side. I'm just going to grab those two ends and do a slip stitch into this side and into the other and do the same. And I'm just going to slip stitch together till, till I reach the marker that will then mark my armhole. And then we'll do the same on the other side. We'll weave in those ends. And your garment is nearly finished now. If you don't like fringe, by all means, you don't need to add it. If your garment is of a nice enough length for you, you may just decide to finish off there. Um, I'm myself, I'm also not <laughs> a lover of fringe. So I did my fringe just a little bit differently to what the normal fringe looks like but I'll show you both options and you can pick and choose and do whatever you wish. I'm just going to snip that off and tie off my yarn. You'll do the same on the other side. Turn your garment back inside out. And you'll have something that looks or resembles a little cardigan. You can pull that for a nicer edge. Uh, you can then also choose to do a few more repeats of the pattern to add a little bit length to your sleeve. But I didn't need to. It measured my, uh, because my front panel measured a certain, uh, what was it, 14 inches I think, across. Um, it reaches nearly to my elbow and that's the perfect length for me for summertime. So I'm just going to show you how I added my fringe all around the bottom. Um, I just started in one corner and worked all the way around. So let me just show you how I did that. Um, for ease of this video, I'm just going to snip this off since it's not a project that I'm working on. You can use a smaller hook. I'm now using my 5mm. I'm just tying a slip knot. And then any which panel, left, right, the other side, doesn't matter. Just go in there with a slip stitch and then I chained 20 um, to reach a fringe measurement of, that's, that's 20 and it measures 3 inches. Um, if you added 10 more, I think you'd have a fringe of about 4 inches. So it's completely up to you how long you want your fringe to be. I'm quite happy with the 3 inches, so that is just what I'm going to show you. I just chained up 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then back into the next stitch. Just a slip stitch. Do the same. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And in the next stitch, slip stitch. And that is just how I created my little fringe. Let me also show you how you can do it with the normal way of fringe. You would measure equal lengths and bits of yarn, cut them to size, and you can then tie them on individually or together for a bit of bulk. Fold them in half. Put your hook through any stitch, grab those two loops, take the long end, grab that and pull it through and that is how you would attach normal fringe to a garment. Um, it always hurts me physically to cut yarn for just, you know, no reason as to just attach it. I would rather use a ball of yarn and cut it up and use it for fringe. But it's a personal preference, I think. And this is the fringe I like to do because I also like to recycle my garments. So a year or two from now, uh, when I'm no longer completely in love with my cardigan, I can take it apart. I have all of that yarn that I can still use. Um, and yeah, it won't be in bits and pieces as this bit of fringe. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed creating this summer cardigan with me. Of course, you can also create it for winter. You can just add a longer sleeve. You can add a hood and I might do a tutorial on uh, on a hood for a, a cardigan in the future, but it will be a definite winter cardigan. Um, we are in summer in Cape Town right now, so I'm thinking of all things summertime. I will be bringing you more winter uh tutorials for because crochet is not just a seasonal thing that we do once in a while we crochet all year round and I'm sure that uh, there'd be something for everyone in my on my channel so guys I hope you've enjoyed this please hit subscribe if you like this video please post uh, your pictures to my Instagram at the woolly bee uh, let me know if you found anything too difficult. Um, I will try to give more pointers and tips for different sizes uh, if and when you guys request them. But for now, this is my Triple XL cardigan in a gorgeous gold yellow, and I cannot wait to wear it. Guys, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!